Welcome to our next episode of Chew the Fat. I'm your host, James Parkell from The Coach Doctor, and let's see what we'll be looking at in this episode. I'll be looking at my progress while I've been on the keto diet and look at some of the changes I've noticed since I've been on the journey. I'll be looking at some keto-friendly snacks that you can eat when you're on the run. I'll give you some recipes for sugar-free foods if you're ever going through some cravings. And as usual, I'll finish with a checkup on the scales to track my progress. So some of the things I heard about before I started the ketogenic diet was that it leaves you, gives you more mental clarity, uh, it gives you more energy throughout the day. Um, it's obviously good for fat loss and weight loss. Uh, it's a healthier style of living. Um, so there was a lot of benefits that I read about that before I started this, this journey and I thought, I'm gonna try and document these and see if it's actually true for me and if it's actually, uh, it's, if it's actually working in, that, in those sorts of areas. And that's why I also did those testing procedures before I started the diet to see if physiologically it's actually good for my body long term or over that three month period uh, as well as the other benefits that we tend to get you know emotionally and energy wise. So a couple of things that I've noticed is I do have a lot more energy. Um, I've, I've, I said it in the first episode I wasn't going to increase my exercise but I've got so much more energy at the moment I've increased my exercise and I, I can't help it. I've been going to the gym a lot more and for the first time in a long time I'm not stagnating at the gym. Uh, whereas I used to train at a certain intensity and I'd sort of sit that same level all the time. Now I'm back into overloading and I'm increasing my weights, I'm increasing my repetitions and I'm actually feeling stronger than I was before. Which is really strange because before uh, we were taught that carbohydrates are really important for um, weight training and really important for physical activity. But I've found, and this is this might just be personally for me, but there are other people who claim it as well, that I'm getting stronger in the gym on a ketogenic diet with zero carbohydrates. I'm training for longer. I'm training strong. I'm training stronger. I'm going more repetitions. I'm lifting more weight, and I'm actually progressing. Whereas before I was stagnating. I was actually looking for easy ways out, and I was like, you know what? I'm at the gym. I'll do the bare minimum just to keep healthy. Now I'm actually getting to the gym. And I'm like, I don't want to leave. I want to stay longer. I want to train harder. I want to lift more. Uh, at the end of my session, I want to do an abs workout or I want to get on the bike and ride for another 15, 20 minutes just to get some more, some more cardio in. Um, so without meaning to, I've actually increased my exercise by quite a lot. And I, uh, you know, I could probably stop that and not do it, but I just feel I've got so much energy, I need to burn it. Uh, so there's one area that I've really increased. Uh, and, and I think that mental clarity um, has been a really big thing. Um, and feeling good, not feeling tired and lethargic all the time. It's, it's quite strange that eating a diet really high in fats, and again, I'm, I'm aiming for about 150 grams of fat per day, uh, that that sort of diet um, is helping me feel better. So today I'm gonna to make myself some chopped peanut butter cups that are very keto friendly, they're high in fat, a uh, bit of protein as well, and very, very low in carbs, but they taste absolutely delicious. First thing we're gonna need is about 60 grams of uh, cocoa butter. Uh, they look a little bit like white chocolate buttons, but they um, are cocoa butter. Uh, and we're gonna put that in the microwave for about 35, 40 seconds. Next thing we're gonna do is put 24 grams of cocoa nibs in the blender. Make sure it's uh, 30 grams of vanilla flavored protein powder. Two tablespoons of flaxseed meal in the, uh, in the mixture. I'll probably use a little bit less because I'm just a bit weary of the, of the carbs. So one. Or one and a half. Then we're going to put in some MCT powder. So this is that MCT coconut oil and this is in powdered form. So we're going to put in uh, 24 grams of this stuff. I'll just tear it so it's back to zero. There's uh, eight, 16 and I'm going to put a little bit of the chocolate flavored one in as well. Now 
There we go. That's done. Then a little bit of Himalayan rock salt, about a quarter of a teaspoon. So a very small amount. That gives it a very salty taste. We don't need too much of that. And now I'm going to blend that all up. So I'm going to pour the contents of that blended mixture in. Oops. Quick there. Uh, then I'm going to add about one and a half tablespoons of peanut butter. Alright. I'm going to stir it all in. Again, just be really careful of that pot bowl. Stir it all in so it's a nice thick doughy mixture. Now there's zero sugar in this, very very low carbs in this, but it's going to taste absolutely delicious. If you find it's a bit too thick you can uh, microwave it a little bit longer just to melt that butter again. I might put a little bit more peanut butter in just for good measure. I love peanut butter. And again, it's one of those uh, condiments that's very low in sugar and it's very, very uh, high in fats. So once it's all mixed up into a very, very nice uh, runny paste, you can start to pause it into like a little muffin tray. I've used a silicone one because they're really easy to get out. Uh, and I've also put it on top of a cutting board because Try to pick that up when it's all running it ends up going everywhere so we're going to put this into the muffin tray Give it one more little stir to make sure that peanut butter has gone all the way through the mixture okay and we're just going to spoon it in to all the little uh muffin sections okay so we've got it all into the tray and now i'm going to put it in the freezer it only needs about 15-20 minutes in the freezer and then they're ready to eat. So once your peanut butter cups are finished and you've taken them out of the freezer, the really good thing about having them in the silicon little containers is you just pop them out, they come out like a little uh, peanut butter cup and you just pop them all out. You can, you can leave them at room temperature but I prefer to leave them in the fridge um, just to keep them nice and hard. So looking like this and you put them straight in the fridge and they're delicious to eat. So I finished my first batch of peanut butter cups and they are absolutely delicious. Um, zero sugar, a lot of fat, but very delicious. So a lot of the questions I've been getting from people about doing the keto diet is that they say it's really hard to maintain when you're going out with friends in a social environment or even taking uh, snacks for on the road because uh, especially when you're when you're driving long distances, it's hard to find things that are easy to carry, easy to, easy to get access to, that sort of fall in that ketogenic diet. Um, so I've got a couple of options today to give you guys a try of. Um, now everyone's got their own personal tastes. A lot of these options are also high in protein, but again, I've chosen options that are very low in carbohydrates and very low in sugar. So I'll go through some of them and. You go out and try them and tell me what you think. So one of my favourite options is the, well naturally, no sugar uh, chocolate bars. I choose the dark chocolate variety because they are lower in sugar. Um, they are naturally sweetened with stevia, which is, if you do your research, a little bit of stevia is fine on the keto diet. Uh, it's very high in fat, um, very like low in, in carbohydrates and moderate in protein. Another great option of a, for a snack on the run is some tuna. I really love this Serena um, and they get come in different flavours. You can get um, savoury onion, you can get garlic, you can get chilli, you can get a whole range of flavours. Uh, again, very low in carbohydrates, very high in, in, in um, omega-3s, omega so it's good fats. You get some olive oil, you get some, and you get some protein. Uh, really easy to carry around, small little packets, you get the larger ones. But the main thing is don't forget a spoon. If you forget the spoon, you're stuffed. 
Another type of snack you can eat while you're on the run is some beef jerky. Um, there's a lot of varieties and lots of flavors of this stuff. Uh, very high in protein, so again, you don't want to eat too much, but again, very, very low in carbs. Comes in a packet, so it's really easy to take with you if you're on the run. So another option I really enjoy are these Aussie Body's low carb protein bars. Um, they're moderate protein, 18 grams of protein, uh, but they're very low in carbs and very low in sugar. Now if you're someone that likes nuts, uh, macadamia nuts are really good. I really like the salted, roasted salted ones. Um, very, very high in fats again. Very low in carbs, but you don't want to eat too many because they are packed with calories. So if you eat too many, you're going to find that you're blowing out. Uh, you can get up to a thousand calories with, with these in no time. So if you're someone that likes chips and savory snacks, uh, I recommend trying the pork crackle. Um, I hadn't really had much pork crackle before I started this diet, and since I've been doing it, I've replaced chips with these sorts of things. Um, again, they're in a packet, they're easy to eat on the run, so you just take them in the car. If you're getting hungry, you can just have a snack on some of them. You find that you probably won't eat a whole packet in one go. This is quite a large packet. So one of the really hard things about being on the keto diet is going out and socialising. You can't have a schooner of beer because obviously uh, beer is high in carbohydrates, but uh, fortunately, uh, vodka, a lot, of, a lot of spirits, very low in carbohydrates, probably not very good in terms of uh, health-wise to have them in excess, but uh, at the same time, if you're going to be out socialising and having a drink every now and then, uh, that can be an option for you on keto. You obviously can't have it with a, a soft drink, uh, like a sugary drink, but you can have it with uh, soda water and a twist of lime or a twist of lemon, um, and then you sort of feel like you're, you're still going out with, with your mates and enjoying uh, some, of, some of the finer things in life. All right, 90.2 kilograms. That's a total loss of 4.8 kilograms so far and 23.4% body fat. That's a total loss of 2.3% body fat so far. So one of the great things about eating these sorts of foods, uh, even though some of them are processed, that the protein and the higher fat content leaves you feeling fuller for longer and feeling more satiated, which means you don't have these sudden cravings to eat more and more if you're on a long car trip or if you're um, you know, going between places, you don't suddenly feel hungry and feel like you need, you crave that sugar. With the carbohydrates, you get that glucose spike or that insulin spike, and then suddenly it wears off and you feel hungry again. With this sort of food, it keeps you feeling more saturated throughout a long period throughout the day. And for me now, I've got to a state where I'm, feeling, I'm not feeling hungry at all, ever. So besides the mental clarity, the increased energy, one of the things that's been really obvious to me and really clear is the lack of reliance on food in general. I've stopped being hungry. Um, and that's also probably decreased the amount of calories I'm consuming every day, which again is also a part of why I'm probably losing weight. Um, I just don't feel hungry anymore. I could go for a whole day without eating. I don't feel hungry at all. I've lost any cravings of chocolates. I used to eat a block of Cadbury chocolate almost every night um, because I crave sugar and I love the taste of chocolate. Um, now I can, I, I haven't touched chocolate in a long time. Um, so I can go to my parents' house who, you know, always have treats in their cupboards and I can, I can open the drawers and I can look at it and say, you know what, I don't want it. Whereas previously I didn't have that that ability to say no, I would be, I'd open up the packet and I would have eaten, you know, some chocolate, some violet crumbles, some uh, licorice, whatever. If there was sweet food on offer, I wouldn't have been able to, to, to say no. I didn't have that, that uh, inner strength to say no. Now, I can look at it and I've got no interest in it at all. So it's really bizarre how that change in diet has rewired my brain that I have no, absolutely no cravings. Obviously before I had that addiction with sugar and now there's absolutely no addiction whatsoever. I can look at sugary foods and I can just say, no, nah, not interested.